All right, joining us now to discuss the latest out of Afghanistan, being joined now by former Pentagon official Mike Maloof. All right, Mike, you saw there mm -hmm. uh, suicide blasts followed by hours long gun battles, uh, reports now about 17 people dead. Uh, so, as much as the U.S. claims that Afghanistan is under control, what's the reality? Is it really? No. Not at all. Uh, and I think that the Taliban, in this case, looks more like it was a Taliban hit because it was predominantly on military uh, mm. uh, uh, people. Uh, but but what, what the Taliban is demonstrating is that they can attack anywhere at any time. And, and they are, this is actually to send a message to uh, Kabul that uh, that that uh, they they can keep on they can keep on negotiating, but they don't want to negotiate with the with the Kabul government, and that they can attack at any time. And they've also promised, even in the negotiations, that they intend to continue the the attacks. But you know, Mike, we've you and I have talked about this uh, frequently with the mm -hmm. Taliban trying to uh, reestablish uh, mm -hmm. uh, their government there. Sure. Um, I mean, why are they continuing to to act out in such a manner? If they want to be taken as a as a government force, not so much a, a you know a, a terrorist organization. Well, it's it's um, <clears throat> they, it's it's like uh, anything else. They're 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 uh, insurgent. They're an insurgency group. They want po they want political recognition. They they have a political arm. Uh, they were recognized. They did run the government at one time right. before we chased them out the first time. And uh, but but the the reality is is that the, they uh, they are trying to. Uh, gain as much as they can, much as much territory as they can, uh, until the, uh, there is an ultimate ceasefire in order to, uh, sh uh, for leverage purposes. And uh, and as I said, they they had promised that they would continue mm -hmm. uh, fighting, uh, just as the uh, U.S. has uh, promised that they will continue to respond. Right. I mean, like you said, it wasn't. This wasn't an attack in the middle of nowhere. This no. is in Jalalabad, right. where it's you know a, a lot of and, U.S. forces. Yeah, and this and this demonstrates that they uh, once again that they can attack any anywhere at any time. The U.S. forces that are on the ground are spread so thinly that uh, uh, there's no way, unlike before, I mean, the f forces that are there are special forces, but right. also primarily for uh, advice and training. They, we don't have the combat forces there that we used to. That's what actually restrained them before. But they're, they're so spread out and, it's, and in such isolated areas mm. that, uh, the, that the Taliban can just work around them. And that's basically what's happening here. And, and what about ISIS? The, the caliphate mm -hmm. has been decimated in Syria, but mm -hmm. you've told us before that they've spread out into insurgencies, even in Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, we now have thousands of their fighters in U.S. custody. Mm -hmm. What do we do with them? Well, that's the dilemma, isn't it? <laughs> the Trump administration wants, wants, to, uh, wants uh, the, the, uh, the countries from which they came to take them back right. and try them. And, uh, uh, and nobody wants them. So, and we can't ha have them. To cut them loose is is irresponsible. Sure. I mean, I think if you look to what what the history of uh, what we did with prisoners of war following World War II, we basically put them through re-education programs. Even the Vietnamese did that. They didn't kill all of the South Vietnamese troops. They put them through a re-education program and basically re-assimilated them. And perhaps uh, that's basically what they can do or die. Well, well I mean, it, as you you said off camera, you were saying, you know, what do we do with all? Of them? Mm -hmm. There's there's so many of them, That's right. uh, but there is room at Gitmo. Is there any chance that that would take place if, if the Trump administration can't figure out what to, what else to do with them? Well, it depends upon how high they are. If they were just grunts and, and fighters, uh, 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 Gitmo would not be the answer. Uh, probably. Well, we've got people there for a lot less, you know, with no charges at all. Well, well, they're not there for, for, for holiday. They're there for a reason. But I think we need to extract some information from them. As I, as I have said in, in previous programs, they've metastasized. Mm -hmm. ISIS has metastasized as an insurgency in some 28 other countries. And we need to have the, the information on that. And I think uh, U.S. should uh, take, take the time to talk, talk to these guys before they uh, just either cut them loose or, or reassimilate re, re them in, in other ways. And with President Trump promising more troop drawdowns across the Middle East, do you think that's a good move given Afghanistan is, is starting back up? Uh, Syria is clearly not finished yet. Uh, do we bring the troops home like he's promising? Well, I don't think they're going to come home entirely. I think they're going to be uh, Probably parked in uh, in, in Iraq uh, to re to be ready for the next crisis, and that's Iran. I think that uh, 
most of them are predominantly special forces, and yeah. uh, I think that they're going to be aimed to uh, to uh, do isolated uh, hits, uh, per perhaps missions. In, in missions uh, in. Uh, in, uh, in in Iran ultimately, and I think that this is this is the growing concern. Is that where the Trump administration's eyes are? Well, well this is what this is what uh, Bolton uh, wants to do. I mean, he there isn't a war he doesn't like, right. and and he's already talked about uh, troops as 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 Trump moving troops into Iraq. But Iraq has got to think about that. Iraq has got to think: Do we really want to be another stepping stone for our neighbor who who has influence over us? And I, right. I, this is this is going to be the next dilemma. And I think that uh, as long as you have Bolton and all of them who want to keep military superiority and 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 keep feeding the military-industrial complex in the United States, we got to have wars in order to uh, keep keep that engine running. And, and basically, this is what is occurring. I mean, if it isn't one crisis, it's another, yeah. and it's all all happening. They'll just move the troops around and uh, yeah, the, uh, bring some back, re replenish them, and, uh, yeah. we'll and be off we go. Seventeen years strong, and yeah. probably continue. It's still going, and there's no end in sight. I mean, in, in a variety of, of hot spots right now, and we can we can we can uh, see this also beginning to flourish uh, very soon with the rise of the resurrection, if you will, of Al Qaeda. As well as ISIS, which is now metastasizing these 28 other, other countries, principally in Africa, and that's worrisome. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll see you chime in about that uh, with all all the specific detail that you have in in your head there. Thank you, as always, for Pleasure. enlightening us on this topic, Mike Maloof. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.